Good morning all and today I'm going to be looking at this. It's a mini laser light. I bought this a few years ago, not for any particular purpose, but it was uh, fairly cheap, about five or six pounds, and I just wanted to see how it works. And uh, on the back there's lots of product warnings about laser radiation and uh, warning this is not a toy and also do not disassemble this unit. Well we're certainly going to disassemble it. So uh, this is it, and it's kind of styled like um, a stage or a theatre light uh, with this uh, arm here so that you can hang it from a gantry. Uh, I don't think you'd want to hang this from a gantry because it's not very exciting. Um, you can see in the front there kind of how it works. There's a laser, there's a couple of motors with uh, mirrors on there, and then there's some electronic circuitry, and one of the chips in there is... A 4017. Now I can either take uh, four alkaline batteries and it says don't use rechargeables and that's probably because the voltage won't be high enough so that's going to be uh, four times one and a half which is six volts but you can also connect um, an external power supply up to this and uh, that says nine volts DC so is there a regulator inside here which would regulate that but not the batteries? Well, we'll find out. Um, we've got a switch here that says on and off for power and another switch here which says slow, audio and fast. So let's get a, a nine volt supply. I've got 14.1 volts outside on my battery bank. The sun's out charging those batteries. So I have to press and hold that and then I can flick through the voltages to get nine volts and if I leave that it will set itself to nine volts. So with nine volts plugged in and the power switch set to on you can see that the motors the lasers come on the motors inside are spinning and it's kind of changing the speed of both the motors uh, at fixed intervals and those intervals are set by the uh, fast button. If I put it to slow, it just changes the speed of the motors at fixed intervals, which are a bit longer. Uh, if I set it to audio, then it changes the speed of the motors every time I tap the box. Oh, the uh, battery cover fell off because there is a little microphone in here. Okay, let's get this thing uh, pointed at the wall and see what these patterns are like. Well, now the laser beam's not very bright, so I've had to dim the lights a little bit in here. So that's one of the patterns. If I tap the box, it'll change to another one and another one. They're all based on circles, as you can see. In fact, they look remarkably similar to the sort of patterns you can generate using the spirograph toy. If you've ever seen the spirograph toy. Rotating circle. And just a circle. Now that one I'm pretty sure is generated by one of the motors turning and the other one being completely stationary. And uh, so on and so forth. So this is the uh, Spirograph toy and by using a, a pen and these plastic gear wheels you can produce these sort of modulated circles, uh, circles modulated by other circles I guess they are. So this is the uh, inside of the unit and there's uh, obviously a red laser diode here. It's got a very big housing. Um, I think some of this though is heat sinking just to keep the thing cool. There are two motors here with the mirrors uh, attached on these little uh, spindles or plates where the mirror is slightly angled so that uh, as it turns it um, throws the light beam out in a circle and of course there are two so you've got uh, one circle created by this motor at the moment this pattern has this motor stationary so we're just creating a circle if I tap the microphone it'll switch to another pattern where both motors are turning and then another pattern where the speed of the two motors is changed and that creates all the various different uh, output patterns. So I've stripped uh, the board right out and uh, there is a regulator there 
It's um, a 7806, I suppose, quite logically. Uh, there are two 4017s. Now, I'd imagine there's one per motor. There's a 4017 here and there's one over that side there. And there are lots of diodes and resistors. And what I'm thinking is that every time you change the uh, pattern by tapping the microphone in the audio mode, it simply moves on to the next of the 10 outputs here. So my, my guess is that there are 10 patterns. And uh, each of these 4017s is driving a separate motor. I'm not quite sure why they use two. I would have thought you could have done this with just one. And then you're using diodes for diode steering, resistors for setting the motor speed. And then there's a couple of power transistors over here for driving the motors. There are a couple of uh, LM324s, one there and uh, another one over there. So they're quad op amps. I'm not sure quite what they're doing, perhaps uh, generating waveforms. I mean, maybe these motors are being pulse width modulated. So the path of the laser is uh, out of the laser diode module onto the first mirror. And then I imagine it goes um, across at 90 degrees. This motor looks like it's angled at 45. This motor also at 45, which then redirects the laser beam out to the front of the unit and produces the pattern. This is out of focus because this appears to be a focused laser module, probably focused at two or three meters. So being this close, it's out of focus. Let's change the pattern. I'm trying to do the microphone really. But... And I would imagine there are 10 patterns given that these uh, 4017s are 10 state devices. I've been trying to uh, date this device, kind of get some uh, ideas of when this thing might have been designed. The laser diode module is very large and uh, I don't quite know why it should be so big. I mean, I've got a laser diode which I pulled out of one of these um, little laser levels and I mean it's tiny in comparison. Uh, the date on the 4017s is 0207 so um, I think that's 2002 and that would kind of tie in with the whole sort of blue transparent plastic thing which was uh, inspired I think originally by the original blue iMac um, some years before but then this transparent blue thing kind of got into pretty much all things you could buy. And uh, the use of um, logic chips, CMOS logic chips and op amps is slightly curious because you'd think that uh, around this time uh, microcontrollers were certainly available and cheap and uh, it just seems odd that this wasn't designed using a microcontroller um, so you wouldn't have to have all these diodes and resistors you could just do it through uh, one of the PWM outputs and perhaps an ADC input for the microphone. So this is a bit of a curiosity really. Um, the patterns aren't very interesting. The light, the uh, red laser lights, not particularly bright. I'm just trying to think what this would be used for. I mean, I guess it's just for uh, parties. I suppose the uh, form factor that looks a bit like a stage light. It's just for fun really. It's just the sort of thing you'd stick on a mantelpiece and point at the wall. It is an odd thing, and um, the fact that it has this very old school design, again, is just curious. And uh, compared with the sort of red, green, blue laser light effects that you can get now, which really are quite stunning and fill the room with, you know, coloured sparkles, this thing's a bit tame, really, with its ten different spirograph type lighting effects. Very strange. So this was one of these things that I bought because I was just kind of intrigued as to how it worked. It wasn't particularly expensive, so it was kind of justified, but I have no use for it. And I'm really not sure what to do with it and whether or not really I should hang on to it. It's just weird and intriguing. And I was supposed to be having a bit of a spring clean and chucking out anything that I don't really need. But uh, I just don't think I can let this thing go. It's too interesting. So I think it'll just get moved from one box to another, relabeled and clung on to.
Cheerio.